So I'm going to talk about climate and Malbec. It's, it's a work that uh, I've been doing in, in a very small um, <coughs> research, uh, sorry, a very small um, investigation department on the winery in which I work that is called Doña Paula and uh, I'm the vineyard manager and also in charge of the investigation on that winery. So uh, uh, three questions. Is it possible to identify, so it's, it's but spelled, is it possible to identify and measure organoleptic difference in different regions? Which are the driven factors that determine these differences? And how can we move forward to generate to generate this knowledge? <clears throat> okay, I want Thank you all for doing my, this work before me. This is the definition of terroir, that is interaction of things. We're going to talk about climate, and climate is about water balance, radiation, and temperature mainly. Uh, Fernando, thank you for talking about radiation before me. And um, this is where Argentinian vineyards are. Yes, you know Argentina is uh, in the southern hemisphere. It's a very long country, um, kind of narrow, especially in the bottom. Um, it has the, the Andes Cordillera, that is out Andes Mountain, that is the longest mountain range in the world. And we happen to have here in Mendoza the highest mountain outside Himalayas. But if you look, most of the Pinja region are located in the west side of Argentina, which is happened to be the driest because it's far away from the Atlantic and, and it's separate of uh, the Pacific by the Cordillera de los Andes. Yes, the exception will be here in the Patagonia that uh, some some vineyards get closer to the uh, uh, ocean, but the influence of the ocean is completely different to what happened in the Pacific. So there is no that cold influence that you have here in the Pacific because the water is not that cold. So uh, about precipitation, we can say that most of the precipitation in this area are very scarce and they are mainly in the summer, they are unpredictable. And in general, the atmosphere has a very low uh, humi uh, relative humidity, so we have to irrigate a lot. About 80% of the water uh, that the plant needs is provided by irrigation. So it's not the main factor, as you can imagine, because we can manage that. <coughs> Sorry. Here we have uh, where Argentina has its vineyards and one region. You have uh, from almost the Tropic of Capricornio up to 42 degrees of latitude in the south. And of course, whenever you go to the south, it's colder, and when you're closer to the tropic, it's warmer. The other main uh, factor that determines temperature is altitude. As you can imagine, we have this huge, huge wall that separates Argentina, this uh, yellow line separates Argentina from Chile. We are, we are here in Mendoza, it will be something like here. Uh, here I have just put as an example three different places of Mendoza. So you see 600 meters elevation, 1,000, um, 1,500 in Gualtajari region where uh, was the Fernando's um, trial. And Buenos Aires that is very close here to the Atlantic. Okay, um, what about the rest of the country? Well, it's, it's quite similar. If, if you see, you can separate Argentina in two parts. The east part, that is quite flat, is uh, almost all less than 200 meters of elevation, and the west part is completely different. You have the Andes, you have some other small, smaller uh, hills and ranges, um, but it's higher and, and it's much more uneven. Yes, um, just as an example, here this is the north part of Mendoza where I came from. If you make one hour drive from the east side to the west, you can switch from 500 meters of elevation to 1500, going from one uh, wine region to the other. Yes, and these are the temperature of uh, some different vineyards. You can see that the Winkler 
classification goes from hot to intermediate and even cold yes just when with one hour drive so you can have a huge difference on, on climate in this part of the, the world the when it's similar you give the number uh, you change one degree every 165 meters yeah? uh, thank you Greg I'm, I'm using your, your map this will be the distribution of temperature during the growing season in, in Argentina. Um, this, this has been done by Greg. Can, you, can I use it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and if you, see, you, if you remember, we said that the east part of Argentina uh, is very flat. So here, the main driving factor of, of temperature is latitude. So you go from hot climate to warm climate changing just latitude but if you look at the west part of Argentina the pattern of change in temperature is completely different so it's mainly driven by the altitude so in a, in a short distance you may have a, a lot of variation yes and here in the top of the Andes we have some permanent snow some glaciers so imagine that it's quite cold in some areas so what happens when you combine that, that two factors? If you combine altitude and latitude, you will have this kind of image. Each dot is a different vineyard in Argentina. Yes, and the color is the Winkler classification. So you have, you have a relationship between latitude and altitude, but you may have the same temperature just switching and balancing uh, the, the coldness of the altitude with the, with the uh, warmer of the latitude. Is it clear? <laughs> and there are some exceptions when you have some C incidence, maybe it get out of the rule, but it's, it's kind of a general rule, yes? And you have some provinces that has maybe two, one, two, or three different Winkler classification. You have some other that, since they have a lot of difference in altitude, they may go from, for example, in Mendoza, you have from very hot areas to cold. Yes, as, as, as we told earlier. And the, the same happened in different places, different provinces, mainly in the west where you can uh, play more with the altitude. Sorry, I didn't tell. So we have about uh, 25,000 vineyards, 200, I'm very bad for the numbers, 224,000 hectares in total, about more than 100 uh, wine varieties. And this is the distribution of Malbec. You can see that it's quite similar because Malbec is everywhere, especially in the last years. And we have about 36,000 hectares. So what we did, we took some samples of uh, regions and we elaborated half ton of grapes in plastic, uh, half ton plastic beans, very simple and a standard micro, uh, micro vinification, two weeks of maceration. And when we had the wines ready with malolactic fermentation, uh, we, we made an um, tasting with ISO standards with a group of people that is had been trained about on average more than six years in the in this method so what we're doing first uh, job is to determine the main the main flavors that, that uh, you have you find in Malbec because as you saw in one of the talk this morning you may have 50 different descriptors, but some of them are, are uh, more common for everybody and more important in intensity. So we discuss, we make a list, and then we saw the we use the one that more than 50% filled in each for each wine, and then we taste each sample separately, uh, isolated from the world, so you can focus uh, with a computer system that only helps to process the data, the, the figures. Uh, I really like from this method the, the fact that you put something on the glass to avoid losing uh, the, the more volatile flavors because as you know some the volatility of the, the flavors is very different from one compound to the other so if, if the first glass you smell at the beginning and the last 20 minutes later you may have a different just for that 
So what we get for each uh, region is a, a profile. Sorry, I didn't mention we used the same uh, vineyards that had a very similar type of soil, which is in this kind of experiment we consider that it's extremely important because you have huge difference, as we saw also this morning, uh, in the um, in the soils and that determine different flavors in the wine. So we try to standardize sandy, deep sandy loam soils, which are quite common in Argentina. So we found at least some vineyard in, in the different regions. And what you can see here is that you have some fruity floral flavors, jammy on one side and more uh, herbaceous or spicy aromas. If you see these fruity flavors are more important in general than these ones, but there are huge variation from one region to the other. So on average, and, and this for me is very important because when you say, okay, describe what is Malbec. Um, with this graph, you can tell it very easily. You have that Malbec in general has red berries, plums, jam, jam, jammy flavors, violet flowers, and blackberry in general. And they are more important than some other very common components that are eucalyptus, clove, cinnamon, that will be like sweet, spicy notes, uh, white pepper, and rosemary, and thyme. Yes? And you can see that not all the flavors have the same level of het heterogeneity. This is, for example, rosemary and thyme is very heterogene in the concentration. <clears throat> okay, but what happens if you put all that together? You, you may, some, uh, you, you may uh, see here that Malbec is mainly a fruity wine and explain on average about three quarters of the flavors that you can feel in Malbec. And the other quarter would be the spicy notes, yes? So we related each of these flavors with different uh, factors like latitude, altitude, the temperature of the whole season, uh, wind, clear, haggling, um, minimum, maximum, and diurnal swing in temperature on March. And in general, we saw that the main driven factor for flavors, the, the one with relate, relate with more flavors, or the variation of more flavor, are the temperature. Yes? See here, latitude and altitude relates with one or two flavors, but the rest is like have more impact on the flavors of the wine. So if, you, if we study each flavor separately, what, what can we see? We can see that some of them are very sensitive to temperature. For example, look at here, this rosemary or thyme that will be like, like herbal, um, aromatic herbals. Um, also the eucalypt, no, sorry, the, the jammy, fruity jammy, the plums, which is a very typical descriptor from Malbec, but also the, the blackberry have a relationship with, with the temperature. So here, the color of the row, explains if the, this flavor in particular is enhanced by high temperature or enhanced by low temperature, yes? So you have a group of flavors here that are mainly the fruity ones, but also the clove and cinnamon that seem to be more important in cooler regions than in warmer regions. And the spicy notes, like uh, the one we talked about, uh, and also white pepper and eucalyptus seem to be more important in warmer places. And if you put all together again, you will see, sorry, this, the, the colors here are the classification of, of Greg also. So it will be warm, hot, and very hot climate. And you see that the spicy and herbal flavors with a very nice uh, correlation are more important in warmer climates and the cool, in a cool climate are enhanced the, f the fruity flavor also with a very nice correlation. But you also have some uh, characteristic flavor that sometimes identify different regions. For example, Luján de Cuyo is very known by the eucalyptus and, and look here how it separates from the rest of the regions. And rosemary and thyme is, are very typical from Cafayate. If you go, if you go to Argentina uh, and you taste a wine from Cafayate, it's completely different from the rest. 
some other things that we evaluated had a less correlation with temperature. For example, astringency seemed to be higher in a cooler place, but not too good correlation. Uh, in the other hand, sweetness uh, will be enhanced by temperature. So in a, hot, in a warm climate, we should expect to have a softer and sweeter tannins. It is, when we talk about sweetness, it's not sugar. It's just uh, we said that Malbec has sweet tannins. Anthocyanins, um, polyphenols, and color have little correlation if you take all the uh, wines from Argentina. But if you go to Mendoza, and Fernando for sure will do it like this. Uh, in Mendoza, if you go to from the warmer region to the color, you will see an increase in, temp in tannins, in color, and also in anthocyanins. Okay, what about? What we can say as a global of, of uh, um, the characteristic of the growing regions of Argentina, okay, we can say that where we have planted Malbec, 64% are planted in hot climate. You have a little bit in very hot climate, and an important fraction, about a quarter, is in warm climate. Yes, a little colder from 17 to 19 degrees. Yes, and if we, if this, what we say about the variation of flavors according to the temperature is true, you, we we can say that most of the wine will be like 70% represented by fruity flavors and 30% by um, spicy flavors. And and we have some fraction that is more balanced, almost 60-40, and some other fraction that in which the spicy notes are very, very weak. Of course, this situation that we see here is not even for the whole country. We can see we can see some difference. For example, this is are the northern provinces, and uh, you see difference of percentage of surface for Malbec. Sorry, this is not for Malbec. It's for the for the whole vineyard. So, for, for example, in Jujuy, which the vineyard are more than 2,500 meters of elevation, it's very cold. But maybe that circle represents 30 hectares. Yeah. Here, uh, if you go to the south, you have different conditions, different combination according to where the vineyards are planted. This will be Mendoza. This is San Juan. You see, the province of, of San Juan is, is hot. You may have, I have been working in that area, and uh, when you go to sleep without air conditioner, it's a nightmare. You have like 30 degrees on nights in January. It's ve very often they harvest Cabernet uh, at the end of January. That will be here, like the end of July. So it's very hot. How we are with the time? Good. Zero. Oh, well, I go fast. <laughs> Warm climate, we make some correlation with comp uh, aromatic components. Um, well, some of things are very interesting. For example, 2-phenylethanol is uh, related with the uh, floral flavors and is enhanced also with the cool climate. This could explain this more floral. And also ethyl isobutirato it could be related also with the fruity flavor. It's related with fruity flavor and is enhanced in cool climate. And the opposite happened with this octanoid acid that has vegetable feeling that is uh, more in the warmer climate. We should see what happened with beta you know now that we didn't make the analysis. And these are family of flavors. Some families of flavor that has this fruity and floral characteristic are enhanced with colder climates. The opposite happens with some acid that has some vegetable flavors. And we'll go fast. One word about theos. Theos, look at this. This is a um, Bases calchaquíes in Cafayate has some theos that doesn't exist in the rest of the country. So, and this theo, the 4 MMP, has tomato leaves, red currant, and a rue that could that is are vegetable flavors that could be related with this, this uh, thyme and rosemary that we are feeling. And this is how uh, the different temperatures are distributed in the country. Uh, possible conclusion, is it possible to identify and measure differences in the country? Yes, mainly in the flavors are the difference. The driving factors, mainly temperature, more than latitude and altitude. 
how can we move forward to generate more knowledge? This is the main important factors. Well, the intention of the work that we have done is not to describe the viticulture of Argentina, but just to show that it's possible to do it. That we not, must be frightening when you say, can you describe the terroir of a, of a country? You may do it. You have to go little by little, varietal by varietal. Only one world uh, as a message. Don't complain about something until you have decided to be part of the solution. Thank you.